بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's deja vu every single year, isn't it? Since we have been talking, since CAGE began, CAGE as an organization began as CAGE prisoners campaigning solely for the Guantanamo uh, brothers, and, uh, and I was one of them. Um, and the Americans and others have alleged that I set up Guantanamo, uh, I set up, sorry, um, um, uh, CAGE prisoners. But I couldn't have because I was in Guantanamo at the time. Uh, and one of the prisoners that has been there for a very long time and has gone through the rendition program and has been the reason why the United States actually set up its enhanced interrogation technique program uh, was Abu Zubaydah. And no case displays this better than the case of Abu Zubaydah. Abu Zubaydah, whose real name is Zain al-Abidin Muhammad Hussein, is um, probably the most well-known prisoner now in Guantanamo. And if he wasn't, the film, the report, has made him so again. And this isn't because of what he did, rather because what was done to him. You can see in the imagery here, this is uh, Abu Zubaydah, an early picture of Abu Zubaydah there on the right. Um, and one of the few photographs of, that ever existed of him before he was captured. The one further down is when he's making a video in response to the US invasion of Afghanistan. So for a little bit of a backstory, Abu Zubaydah was in Afghanistan and had been involved in the post-Soviet um, uh, presence of Mujahideen within Afghanistan. And it is true and widely accepted that Abu Zubaydah was involved in uh, the facilitation of transporting uh, people to go to camps to learn to fight against various occupations, whether it's in Kashmir or Chechnya or Bosnia. But what he wasn't, which the Americans believed he was, as a member of Al-Qaeda or a chief strategist or number three or number two or any of those numbers. But that's what they believed in 1998. So he was already on their list. And then when the Americans alongside, so the FBI, the CIA, and the Pakistani Internal Inter uh, Services Intelligences raided a house in Faisalabad based on um, intelligence they'd gathered, they raided this house and there was a shootout, or rather they shot people. There wasn't um, a, a firefight, they shot Abu Zubaydah in three parts of his body, in his stomach, in his privates, and in his thigh. And this is the picture of Abu Zubaydah uh, when he was uh, first captured and it became, it was touted as the biggest capture of Al-Qaeda, of an Al-Qaeda prisoner to date. And it is important because um, Abu Zubaydah was involved in a camp and facilitating for a camp. And that camp was run by somebody called Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. And that's really important that we know this because this camp was closed down in Afghanistan in 1999 two years before 9-11. And Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi and Abu Zubaydah were no longer involved in it. But what happened to Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi simultaneously when Abu Zubaydah had been captured or just before that is that he was sent alive in a coffin uh, to the USS Bataan, which is a warship in the Persian Gulf, and tortured and then sent to Egypt where he was famously or infamously tortured into giving a false confession that Al-Qaeda was working with Saddam Hussein on obtaining weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons, and that became the key justification by Colin Powell, who was the US um, Secretary of State at the time, who went to the United Nations Security Council to argue for a case uh, uh, to go to war in Iraq based on that false confession that they had tortured and waterboarded out of, Abu, uh, out of Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. So Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi eventually was sent to a prison in Libya where he turned up dead in his cell in May 2009. He was never sent to Guantanamo to be, so that his case might have come to the fore. However, Abu Zubaydah was. And this is what became of him. So one of the things that happened um, is that Abu Zubaydah was sent to a series of secret detention sites around the world. They included um, 
a famous or an infamous torture center known as the Cat's Eye Prison, and that's where he was waterboarded over 83 times. Now, for those of you who don't know, you should know by now what waterboarding is. Is there anybody who doesn't know what waterboarding is? Does anybody think it's got anything to do with sports? It's nothing to do with, you know, um, surfboarding. Waterboarding is a technique that was used by the Spanish during the Inquisition against Muslims and Jews who refused to or had hidden their religion that they had no, that they, they were hiding, um, that they were, that uh, their conversion uh, to Christianity. So what they would do, and they would practice this mostly on women because it was seen as a softer torture technique. They would tie the person to a board and then they would tie the head down, arms and legs, and pour water after they stuffed a, uh, a cloth in the mouth and pour water down the nose of the person that's being tortured. So they get the feeling that they're drowning even though they're not submerged. This in Spanish is called tortura del agua, meaning torture of the water. The United States argued that this is not torture. And the argument was presented by the most powerful and senior legal advisors to the government like Jay Bybee and um, Alberto Gonzalez, the uh, attorney general, the legal advisor to George Bush. They framed an argument that unless it's organ failure or death, it's not torture. This is how they justify. This is how the United States of America justified crafting torture. And it's important that you understand that waterboarding was used by the Nazis in World War II against um, uh, French resistance. It was used in Vietnam by Americans. It was used by the Japanese against American prisoners of war. And those Japanese soldiers who waterboarded American prisoners of war were prosecuted for war crimes and executed. So you understand the context of it today. Uh, um, not a soul, despite the fact that America has admitted waterboarding Abu Zubaydah, Khalid Sheikh and others, not a single person has been held to account for these war crimes. Uh, Abu Zubaydah also was uh, uh, sent to secret sites um, in Afghanistan. Diego Garcia, which is a British island, which infamously Jack Straw said that unless we believe in conspiracy theories, there is no sense or or truth in the allegation that the British island of Diego Garcia was used by the, Amer by the Americans for the rendition program. We now know several people, including Abu Zubaydah, were sent uh, to Diego Garcia. Interestingly also, Abu Zubaydah was sent to Poland, to Lithuania, to Romania, Romania and eventually to Guantanamo. And I'll, I'll explain exp uh, his, the, what happened to Abu Zubaydah in Poland, Lithuania, and Romania, because it's important for the, um, the story of justice. And also, so you also understand, the person that later headed the cat's eye prison in Thailand was called Gina Haspel. At the time was a, a, a lowly or, or low ranking officer of the CIA. Today, she is the head of the CIA, appointed by Donald Trump. So uh, Abu Zubaydah remained in all of these deep detention sites and eventually in 2006 was transferred, as you've heard this term already, a high value detainee and was sent to Guantanamo and isolated from the other prisoners in um, a place called Camp 7, where he remains to this day. Uh, his lawyers, uh, we have been, Cage has been in contact with and talking to his lawyers continuously. They've changed over many times, but one thing that remains consistent is that every single one of them talks about the nature of Abu Zubaydah as a person and managed to humanize him in ways that it's hard, uh, considering the media had continually for many years said that he's the top ranking Al Qaeda member. By 2008, that allegation, that lie was broken, not least by American media sources and intelligence themselves who said he's neither a member of Al Qaeda, neither did he have any knowledge at all of what happened uh, uh, on, uh, in relation to 9-11. Uh, and one of the organizations, are, uh, ironically, that were involved in capturing him, involved in abusing him, involved in his torture, though they claimed they weren't, is the FBI themselves who said that intelligence that came from him was based on torture and false. 
Abu Zubaydah remains also one of those people about whom it's been said that he is, to quote, too innocent to charge. Think about that. In a land where the presumption of innocence is paramount. Too innocent to charge, but too dangerous to release. That's what's said about him in 2013. But what we want to really see, because we've heard, we've seen about the, we've seen the images from some of the Guantanamo prisoners that draw, drew pictures and paintings of their reflections in Guantanamo in recent times. But what we have here recently, just this year, released in the New York Times, was imagery that came through uh, Abu Zubaydah's lawyers that was allowed to be published, and you can see his number, uh, 10016, that's his ISN or internment serial number at the bottom. That's Abu Zubaydah drawing reflections of what he encountered himself. This is a self-portrait of Abu Zubaydah's experiences. So short shackling on the left is something that uh, all of us were, were subjected to in one way or the other. That's literally when your legs are tied to your hands, uh, to the ground, and you're shackled either to the floor or to bars on the top. Uh, the chair, this is a simply an, another technique where they shackle you to a chair, uh, again, hooded. Uh, and this is, alhamdulillah, by Allah's grace, is something that I didn't experience, but I know other brothers did, and that's being confined to a small box where you are unable to sit up, let alone stand up. The larger confined box. I did spend some time in a larger confined box or a larger confined room. And you have, you can't, if you're a taller person or even if you're my height, you can't lie down in that room. You have to lie down curled up. You, you, can't, uh, you can't sleep. It's impossible. And uh, Abu Zubaydah spent weeks and weeks in various places in such Positions. Again, these are the confined, the smaller confined box next to it to give you an idea of what it's like compared, compared to the larger uh, confined box. Here is waterboarding. Abu Zubaydah was waterboarded 83 times. And he wasn't, he wasn't waterboarded the most. There are people like others, like Khalid Sheikh Muhammad, who was waterboarded over 180 times. But to be waterboarded like this, tied, you can see the straps, a strap for every part of his body almost, including his head. The head has to be strapped because the head can move. So it needs to be strapped down in order to stop it from moving. And a cloth is placed over his body, over his head, sorry, and water is uh, poured continuously. You know, strangely, during the Spanish Inquisition, to try to sound more humane, um, they said that a maximum of eight liters of water could be poured over the person. So anything more than that would be too much. And that was the, the, um, uh, the, the rule set by the inquisitors during the inquisition. Again, they do have a rule, I don't know what it is of how much water, but suffice to say that when it's, it's been done 83 times, you feel like you're being murdered. Uh, a technique walling, again, this is something, and sleep deprivation, something that was standard, used against all of the prisoners. Uh, walling is when they literally hold you and then smack you against the wall. Not torture, you could arguably say, but it is cruel, inhuman, degrading, especially when they've stripped you naked, beaten you, made you su subject to the sounds of a woman screaming next door that you're led to believe is your wife being tortured. Sleep deprivation, again, something I've gone through. Uh, when they tie your hands, or sometimes they don't tie you. Uh, in my case, they tied my hands behind my back, to my legs. And uh, it's something we call being hogtied. And leave you there so it's impossible to sleep in that position. So Abu Zubayr had gone through all of that process. And at some point, several years after it, he managed to gather his thoughts and put pen or pencil to paper and draw what he had gone through. So this is Abu Zubayr now or uh, a, couple, a few years ago. And again, you can see uh, that his eyes are covered mostly, he wears glasses. When his lawyers talk to me about how he is as a person, they find him 
intelligent. They find him deeply compassionate, caring, and they find him funny. They find him humorous. They come out laughing, sometimes rolling over laughing from uh, the way they interact with him. And again, this is something that I found from almost all the prisoners I know. They always make you laugh. There's one brother who walked in right now, just now. Um, a former Guantanamo prisoner, I won't name him. And immediately I saw him, I, started, I felt like laughing. And that's how the brothers make you feel. Smiling in the face of your brother is a sadaqah, it's a charity. And this is something that's exuded by all the brothers that I've come across. Musa Zamuri, he sometimes when he comes, he stayed at my place. We sit and laugh sometimes all night right till Fajr. Um, it's hard to describe that. And it's important you know that because even those who seem to be on the right side of, the, of history don't get it. See, I said that there was a film that's been produced. It's, in, uh, it's now on Amazon if you want to watch it. It's called The Report. And it is a, it's a brilliant film. It's received, received um, uh, tremendous accolades. And again, you can see one of the lines given, a portrait of American heroism. It's about the team under U.S. Senator Diane uh, uh, Fenstein who fought to expose and bring to the fore the role of the CIA and uh, the entire torture program to light, to hold them to account. Not because they love Abu Zubaydah or Khalid Sheikh, in fact, they hate them but because they want to hold to the rule of law and say that because torture is prohibited according to American law, then anybody who carries it out must be held to account. That's the theory. In reality, uh, the United States did the Senate torture report on CIA in 2014. It was published, some 6,000 odd documents, which highlighted and detailed over 119 cases of people who've been tortured which, uh, and one case that featured was Abu Zubaydah's. This film is about the process or the fight, the struggle uh, Diane uh, Feinstein's office and officers had to go through in order to get the CIA, um, uh, CIA report done and the massive hurdles they faced. But what you see here, unfortunately in the film, though the campaign and the fight that they did was laudable. Abu Zubaydah and anybody else who are the prisoners in there are an afterthought. So you can become heroes for a cause, but what you can't do is do what I just said, is to humanize the person, is to talk about, about them as if, as I explained, they laugh, they joke, they smile, they cry, they draw, they paint. They live. And finding a place to do that is very difficult, and that's what Cage has been trying to do since. Not simply campaigning for the rule of law, but humanizing the prisoners so you understand them as human beings and as people who we should be fighting for because of what they've gone through. I said earlier on, now this is the irony, the great irony, Abu Zubaydah has been recognized by the European Court of Human Rights as a prisoner that's been subjected to torture in European nations, including um, members of the, the dying European Union. So Lithuania and Romania uh, were ordered by the European Court of Human Rights to pay 100,000 euros damages to Abu Zubaydah because he was tortured on their soil. Can you imagine that? A hundred thousand paid to Abu Zubaydah. How is it paid to him? Allahu Alam. How does he spend it? God knows. But there you go again. The law says that he's, he, he's, um, he requires compensation for torture. The elephant in the room is, why are you still holding him when you haven't charged him? The world's most powerful law enforcement and intelligence agencies and military have held him for close to two decades and still they haven't even taken him or intend to take him to the kangaroo court known as the military commissions where evidence 
can be produced through hearsay evidence, where there is no right to appeal, where judge and jury and prosecutor are the ones who've already uh, deemed you to be an enemy combatant, even by those standards, they still haven't held him, uh, taken him to court. Instead, Abu Zubayd is fighting his case outside of the uh, Guantanamo. In addition to, po uh, to Lithuania and Romania, Abu Zubayda was also, in 2018, um, given $250,000, don't know how again, by the European Court, which ruled that he was tortured on Polish soil. So all of these European nations are involved in the torture of Abu Zubaydah and are being forced by the European Court to pay compensation for what they did to him. Has that caused his release? No, it hasn't. It gets worse. This year, the police, think of this, the British police were investigating the role of UK officers in the torture of Abu Zubaydah, meaning that the police were investigating MI5 and MI6's role in Abu Zubaydah's torture. Now, we were just talking about what happened in America and the rest of the world, and Lithuania and Poland and Romania and so forth. Now it's come home. The, C, the, the MI5 potentially being involved in the torture of Abu Zubaydah. We know for a fact, as the um, uh, Intelligence and Security uh, Committee report gave uh, last year, that British intelligence officers were involved in our torture, in the torture of the British prisoners and others. There's no doubt beyond that. But here again, in the case of Abu Zubaydah, an investigation is going on. I dare say, like it happened with the other uh, uh, police investigation that Cage gave evidence to, that nothing will come of it, but at least it shows um, that there's plenty of evidence. So, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, again, this is another drawing by Abu Zubaydah. Um, uh, the picture kind of speaks for itself where he is. We have been campaigning from the beginning for the Guantanamo prisoners, for them not to be, it's no longer about them being brought to justice, because let's recognize what it isn't. It isn't justice to hold people for two decades and not charge them. That isn't, it's not just injustice, it's a crime. A crime of false imprisonment, torture and rendition for which no one has been held to account. They have produ produced reports in Britain as I said, the Intelligence Security uh, Committee, which again we gave evidence to in 2018. The Senate in the United States of America producing reports about how they were involved in the torture of Abu Zubaydah. The fact that the CIA destroyed the tapes of when Abu Zubaydah was being waterboarded because they didn't want that evidence to be used. Even despite that, they've still admitted or rather accepted in the details of these reports that this, these war crimes were taking place. The common factor is here between Britain and uh, America and even the countries that have compensated Abu Zubaydah is that you as nations were involved in crimes, serious crimes, and I say war crimes as nations. If any of us as individuals had done such things, you would have thrown the book at us. You would have imprisoned us for decades, you would have given us life sentences. And yet you governments who claim to hold or uphold the rule of law, not only do you escape punishment, you don't even present anybody to the courts. You don't even admit that there's a case to answer. You say, here's our exercise in openness. We've done a report. Aren't we good? Pat ourselves on the back. Aren't we a nation of, civiliz uh, of laws and civilization? So my dear brothers and sisters, just to conclude that uh, we as CAGE, we were born out of Guantanamo, we will continue to campaign uh, against it. And with your support, inshallah, I can see here, like I said, every year it's deja vu. Uh, I don't want us to be back here again talking about these cases, but I dare say we will. But it's only as long as the pressure, uh, the evidence, the details, the humanization of these prisoners is done, uh, can we ever achieve some form of justice uh, وجزاكم الله خير وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك.